On this National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, we acknowledge that we, CHCH, here on Innovation Drive, are within the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And as part of the city of Hamilton, we're also situated among the traditional territories of the Neutral and Haudenosaunee on land, which is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We thank the Mississaugas of the Credit and our First Nations neighbors for sharing this land with us, and we commit ourselves to listening, learning, celebrating, and developing respectful and meaningful relationships with one another. And with that, Indigenous people here in Hamilton say some progress is being made towards reconciliation, but they say it's going very slowly, and there's a long way to go. The Hamilton Regional Indian Center organized an event at Gage Park to mark the day. Al Sweeney was there and has the support. On Canada's National Day of Reconciliation, Shireen Bombery shared her story of a childhood in a residential school. I was ashamed to say where I was, and I felt guilty because I blamed myself for going there. I was only 10 years old. Bombery was taken to the Mohawk Residential School in Brantford in 1966. She was separated from her family, couldn't keep her own clothes, had to go by a number instead of a name. She had a ruler in her hand, not those one skinny rulers either, the, the bigger ones. And um, she said, put out your hands. And she was punished for no reason. So she hit us up and down and up and down with that ruler on my hands. And I couldn't understand why I was getting hit because I was never hit at home. But it hurt, it hurt. And I remember 10 years old keeping that pain inside me. Years later, Bombery says it's important for Canadians to know what happened. Because if you don't accept the truth and you don't listen to the truth and you don't move on from the truth, there's no rec I, there's, I can't see reconciliation in my time. She says listening to the stories of survivors is a first step. And the head of the Hamilton Regional Indian Center says there's a lot more indigenous history the rest of the country has to learn. Remember, if you're on indigenous land, we were here first. You are the settler and we had history before you. We weren't savages. We weren't, you know, a bunch of disorganized people wandering around. We had civilization, we had culture, we had government structures, you know, and, and that knowledge and awareness needs to go beyond the indigenous community to mainstream, to be able to, to really recognize and see indigenous people as equal. And the people here say there has to be action. Reconciliation is giving our First Nations people water and the land and the resources okay. back. So That's what we need. What we That's what we need. Everybody. Indigenous nations are inherently land-based. We're of and uh, kind of created by this land. We're inherently tied to it. Uh, and what we do is always linked to land. And so in Hamilton here, we need a green space. We need an outdoor space that is dedicated specifically for us. We still have Indigenous folks that are experiencing racism, discrimination, that are, are not um, getting equitable opportunity to, to housing and resources. And so when I look at truth and reconciliation, it isn't just at a uh, political level. It is not just at, you know, with our system changers. It's with every single, each and in, in, in individual. So there were some school children in the park for today's events. They described the residential schools they were hearing about as a sad part of Canada's history, but said it's good to learn about them so it doesn't happen again.